Welcome to From AMIA to Armistice, a series of podcasts commissioned by UCL Institute of Education. I'm Simon Bendry, Director of the UCL Institute of Education's First World War Centenary Battlefield Tours Programme. In August 2018, students from across the United Kingdom joined students from France, the United States, Canada and Australia on the Western Front to commemorate the Battle of Amiens. This series, recorded largely on location during that battlefield tour, tells the story of the Battle of Amiens in the wider context of the First World War and the road to armistice. In this podcast, Professor Sir Hugh Strawn reflects on the last stop of the tour, the glade of the armistice in the forest of Compiègne. My name is Hugh Strawn. I'm Professor of International Relations at the University of St Andrews. I'm on the boat going back from Calais to Dover after a very successful trip with the Battlefield Study Tour. The last thing we did before leaving France was to visit the Glade of the Armistice in Compiègne, where uh, the railway carriage used to sit in which Ferdinand Foch, the Allied Supreme Commander, together with Wester Weems, the British First Sea Lord, who was representing the naval interests, met the German delegation for the armistice negotiations, which led to the signing of the armistice just after 5 a.m. on the 11th of November 1918. And that was the armistice that took effect at 11 a.m. on the same day. This was the agreement which effectively ended the war between the Western powers, Britain and France and the United States, and Germany in France and in Western Europe. Armistice had already been signed on the Italian front, on the Ottoman front, and the first armistice of all on the Macedonian front, signed in Salonika, today is Thessaloniki, at the end of September 1918. There in Compiègne now is a museum and an indicator of the two railway tracks, one of which brought in the German delegation who'd crossed by car from the German lines and then got onto a railway train. The two parties met in the railway carriage which Ferdinand Foch and his delegation used. Confined space across a comparatively narrow table, four on each side of the table, The German delegation had a particularly profound problem because there was revolution in Germany on the 9th of November 1918, which meant that they were uncertain what their authority was to act. As plenipotentiaries of the German government, the question for them was, who was the German government? The Kaiser had gone. The new Chancellor, Ebert, said that they had the authority to act and that in itself gave them the authority to accept the terms. The trees that enclosed that ground then have now been removed. One of the reasons for choosing the Compiègne Forest was precisely to ensure security, quietness, no interference from journalists. The episode was formally, at any rate, not reported on. At the same time, the Allies had intelligence as to what the German delegation was communicating back to Berlin. As a result, the Allies knew perfectly well just how desperate the German delegation was to agree to terms. There are other memorials now around the Glade, a memorial to Foch himself, a memorial to some of the units that served in the First World War and have served France subsequently. Also a memorial that in particular commemorates the defeat of Germany, a German eagle that is falling prostrate onto the ground. It commemorates, too, the recovery of the two provinces of Alsace-Lorraine, which makes a connection between the three wars between France and Germany in less than a century. The War of 1870-71, to which caused France to lose the provinces of Alsace-Lorraine, acquired by Germany as a defensive zone between them and the French, whom they saw as the precipitators of war because of Napoleon. The lost provinces recovered as a result of the war in 1918-1919. And then, of course, in 1940, the Germans came back here, triumphant again, and ensured that it was here in Compiègne that France signed the Instruments of Surrender in June 1940.
You have been listening to From Amia to Armistice, a Chrome Radio production for UCL Institute of Education. The producer was Katrina Oliphant, with sound design by Chris Sharp. In our next podcast, we hear reflections from the group representing France on the Battlefield Tour.